What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fi here with my friend and um, my man, Eric Sheet Saber. Uh, and most importantly, it is Eric's birthday. We're going to be covering this this Tuesday slate, and it's a fun little slate. But happy birthday, Eric! And uh, Nar narratives matter. We'll see what happens. I know, and I'm sorry I didn't get to come out there to visit because of the obvious craziness in yep. the country right now. But yep. uh, next year, next year we'll do something for sure. Abs abs absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Sounds good. Um, what did you think about this slate and how, how things go treat you yesterday? And uh, yesterday, not uh, you know what? I did all right in FanDuel. I didn't do very well on DraftKings though. Um, yesterday, um, just oh, another announcement by the way. I'm trying to work this out, but but uh, for those of you who are interested, tomorrow I'm going to be doing an interview with um, Matt Newell, who who created and developed a site called Big Data Tennis. Uh, he was really really. Uh, you know, everybody really played tennis, like from a betting perspective, like really subscribe to the site, and whatever. He had to close it down just for lack of interest, I guess, over the last year. I'm going to talk to him more about it because he has another job or whatever. So I wanted to ask him, you know, I want to talk to him about tennis and DFS tennis. I, I sent it to you. Yeah, if, you I want, it. If, you, yeah. if you want to join too. And I also sent the crane to see if maybe he wanted to get involved in that also. It's just an early time slot for you. That's the only thing. I'll look um, it up. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's at 10, 15 a.m. and I'll record it and I'll ask some questions of him. And who knows, maybe I could, could cajole him to get back and doing some tennis content or something like that. Because he has a real job. Yeah. And yeah. He, you know, and, and we'll 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 see if he's still if I can get him uh, that's my goal is to get him juiced up again into uh into, into getting involved in it again. No, sounds good, man. That'll be that'll be good. I'm glad we're uh yeah. So, so, to, game. Go ahead. so today today's slate, I I I I'm I'm not um and it's like so stupid to say because it always works out this way. It doesn't work, never works out this way, but it doesn't seem like there's that great value. Like, but then again, it's seven hours till game. No, time. but, but, but today was the most I've gone through and I, I was up early today. So I went through a bunch of different builds and lineups and really like there's probably, there's going to be news like, right. sure. but we usually at least start off with some very obvious glaring plays. Yeah. There's only one play that's obvious and glaring. And it's the same guy who has every slate and that's Jokic. Like nobody else is, at all a must play there's a million routes to build even Jokic, you could go a different route than that but i mean he seems like the most obvious spend up but i, I it's 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 a, I, I hope it, it won't happen but i hope it stays like this because it reminds me of the old dfs days where you have to get a little creative and play play some some interesting guys you know it sucks to, to play austin rivers and, and you know and by the end of the day i'm sure i won't have any austin rivers but if, if, if we don't have value, that's a guy who I might have to play. We might have to play some Iguodala, guys who I don't usually play like that. So I, I kind of like the idea of, of differentiating your builds. Like, and especially on DraftKings, it's tough. On FanDuel, it is a very different site today on FanDuel. There are some, some glaring prices for some of the, the spend-ups, actually, that I found really interesting. So that, that's just what we have to sort of navigate over there. Um, but I'll have all my builds and all my predictions and everything ready in the next, you know, after the, by the time shit, you probably watch the show. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try and do the best we can with it. An update on a couple of things. First of all, um, uh, I've been I spent the last day or so. I've been grinding these these New York sports book bonuses um, to oh, try yeah. to get as big as bonus as possible, and then basically get my bonus and try to break even betting. You know what I mean? That that's the that's the plan. Um, and uh, so yeah, so yesterday I started off pretty 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 nice. I went. Uh, we went four and two. Um, and again, all I got to do is basically break even. And even I can even do a little worse than break even. But if I break even, I, I, I recoup those bonuses like a then some, you know. So so uh, that's what I, that's that's kind of my goal. Um, and with regard to the slate, it's interesting because you have you have a situation where the, the value isn't that great. And yet you have Jokic projected like 15 points higher than anybody else. Right. right? So it, it's it's the question of. Well, I don't care if the value is not great. You just have to find a way to play it. Or value is not great, so you just have to give up the 15 points from Jokic. You know, it's, it's, it's an interesting question. Right. And we, and we talk about this is what used to be the game. You know, you could, you could avoid the guy who's the highest scoring player by a significant amount if you get your other middle guys right. And that's maybe the route that, you know, the early slate will want us to look at. But we're going to have to talk through each game. Why don't we okay. share your screen and go through it? Because it's, it's going to be a lot of trying to figure things out. Um, and, and there's going to be some guys who are used to at these prices wanting to play, but who have really been deading lately. And they start in the first game. Um, and that's, that's in this OKC side of this Washington thing. I'm curious how, how you like these guys, because they're not going to project incredible. They do look like, like I'm talking about specifically Giddy and Che, but I I'm sort of concerned about like 
like Shea's going to have some, plenty of 50 fantasy point games left in the season, but I, I, it does make me nervous that, I mean, you look at his assist rate versus Giddy's, and it, it does feel like Giddy is sort of taken on the role of, of like the main, you know, I don't know, the main guy to use in the offense, but what's weird is Giddy somehow managed to have a low usage rate while getting a million assists every game. I don't really know how that's possible, but I, I don't know. It's, it's just, a, it's, a, it's because they're both there. I think that, yeah, we can always just pick one, but if you look at what Jaws, been, I'm sorry, what uh, Shea's been doing lately, uh, we haven't seen the last few games. We have not seen that 30 plus percent usage rate, which he had earlier in the year. We have not seen the assist, the assist be there for him for a while now um, with when Giddy's healthy. And of course, this could be an exception to all of those things and he could put up a big game, but like, so what, where, where are you sort of on this game and, and, and who are you looking at? Because it's, it, it is a weird situation. And, and, and you know me, if, if all things being equal, I will always try to find a way, or even close to equal, I'll try to find a way to fade that first game. Yeah, I like, um, I like Shea the best. Uh, and again, it goes back to, to how, you're, how you want to build. You know, if, if you want to play Jokic, then playing, you know, then, then you're not as uh, interested in playing a bunch of the AKs, right? But but if you if you want to fade Jokic, then guys like Shea are just kind of important to consider, right? At that price range, so I do actually like him. Um, you know, it's not, and and I, you know this famous last words, but it feels like a really really low scoring slate. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't mind somebody that's going to maybe get me forty fantasy points, seven eight hundred. Mm-hmm. You know, so 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 I, I kind of like that. I'm not exactly ready to give the reins over to Giddy yet. Um, in that in that uh, environment uh, but it's certainly making a case for it i'm not so, even really thinking giddy i'm just thinking like shade hasn't i mean he hasn't put up 30 fantasy points anytime lately yeah like, so it just feels thinner than maybe you know you'd want it to but but i certainly obviously we could see a 50 out of them tonight and it wouldn't surprise anybody the slightest bit they're all going to have some ownership all of these okc guys how do you have the other ones ranked with the Jerry i Rocker really did i really didn't so, so again, so it's all going to be relative to others, right? I, I, I don't really like any value that much. Um, but Dort, Baisley, Earl, I, I guess I would rate Earl the best and then Baisley and Dort. But I just always have that, that memory of Dort being able to flash the ceiling from time to time, mm-hmm. you know? So in GPPs, I think I'd rather play Dort than those than those others but um they all they all look just just as you would say just fine right that's exactly how i feel i if i had to rank them i would go probably earl Baisley for the value side of the door it's a little bit more expensive but i do like Dort better than either of those guys but he's 5200 obviously it's a little bit of a different tier and i am finding that, that you know if you want to spend up for some of the guys who i like you're gonna want some value and, and the early value has me at least for placeholders if nothing else Bas- with Baisley and Earl being in some of my lineups. And then uh, I haven't gotten to as much Dort, oddly enough. I don't really need that. That price range is sort of dominated by the Clippers for me. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get into that later. But uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's uh, a lot of it feels thin and it, it just, they have a lot of bodies healthy. They're pretty, you know, I don't know. It's, I, I, I would go Giddy, I would go Shea then Giddy still, don't get me wrong, but it's, it just doesn't, it's just something about it feels a little fishy. Um, that's all I would say. Anything on the Washington side for you? Not really. I mean, they all, you have Rui who's back that, that is good for him and bad for others. Um, I'm just kind of gazing through, I, I really don't have any, I mean, maybe Harold, uh, at 4,700, maybe that makes some sense. Mm-hmm. Um, that's pretty much it over there. Yeah. I like Harold. Um, I, I think Rui, like we're going to have to see if they increase his minutes anytime soon. Um, but I mean, that's just something to keep an eye out for his price. You know, we would love to play him at 4k if he's getting 28 minutes, obviously, but he's, you know, he played 14 in the first game against Orlando the other night. Um, I don't think they're going to try and force him back to more than 15 or 16 minutes, try and take it really easy with him, which makes sense. But, uh, but I, but I, I, I'm with you on Harold. I I do like Harold. I don't mind speculating here. I I like him on FanDuel also. I, I, part of what I don't like about him on DraftKings is I do like the center position today. So I would be a little bit careful with, with how much Harold I played on DraftKings, but on FanDuel, I don't mind doing it at, and, uh, at 4,900 at power forward. So that, that's, that's my, my route with this one. How about uh, Phoenix-Toronto? Because we have a pretty good total game here. 
And it feels to me like yet another good Chris Paul spot. Um, I think Jay Crowder is in a price range that in a game we expect to be competitive where he's viable at 3,900 because we don't have the other value. Um, I did get away with the bridges the other night. I played him at 4,900 when nice. he was super thin owned and on the small slate. What did he get? 30? 34 something, 33. Okay. Nice. You know, um, I, but the other guy I played in addition to him, I, I rotated between them was Duncan Robinson, who was less than half a percent owned who put up 39. So that was, that was, uh, either one would have been fine. Um, at least to win that, that tournament that I won. But, uh, yeah, I think Chris Paul is my favorite play here. I never mind if anybody wants to take a shot on Booker. Uh, these Toronto games get a little, little wonky, especially with the no fans. I mean, I just want to point out that Fred Van Vliet, when there aren't fans in the arena, for whatever reason, just seems to be absolutely like go nuts every single time. And I'm kind of curious, you know, this Phoenix team famously played great with their, uh, in the bubble and, and playing in a game with, without fans in the arena. Uh, I don't know. I'm just sort of, I, I, I don't want to overdo the angle, but there's not a ton of games here, not a ton to love. Uh, anyways, current, I currently have Chris Paul um, as my most interest of anybody, but then Jay Crowder followed by Crowder. Uh, I don't mind Aiton and, and campaign either, but uh, I just sort of feel blah about most of them outside of Chris Paul and potentially uh, Crowder. And, and I guess I could get to Booker, but I don't think it's my favorite play. How about you? Yeah. So I have a couple of, of thoughts on this game. First of all, from the Toronto side, uh, I do like uh, both Van Vliet and uh, Siakam. Siakam did very, very nicely the other day for me, at like like 1% ownership, you know, like 50, 55 fantasy points, something like that. He had a really, really nice game. Um, and I might He's been great lately, by the way. Yeah. I might consider going back to that. I don't like too much else in Toronto. I think the Phoenix thing is really interesting for a couple of reasons. For, first of all, um, Aiton uh, came back off of the two week layoff and, you know, he played, a, played 32 minutes against, you know, in a tough matchup in general, you know, it didn't do that great, but if he's going to be back to full starting role and all that stuff, um, he's probably pretty cheap, but, but what, what I'm interested in is, and again, we're going to know this beforehand. I mean, when, when you go into Toronto nowadays, you're, you're facing all kinds of COVID risk as far as, as, as being able to even get back into the country, you know, like if you're now going to have to test to get out of there. Mm -hmm. And if, if, if they test and like, don't get out of there, I don't, they might have a game tomorrow. You know, I, I, I think it's very possible that, that, that one of these guys, Paul or Booker or whatever, might not even make the trip. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Um, I didn't really do that much deep deep diving into this whole concept, but I, I think it's I think it's worth looking at their schedule and seeing if they play tomorrow or something like that. Yeah, they, don't. they don't. But in, in either case, I you know again we'll know this well before you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But if, if they're if they're not going to be in the freaking country, right? I would hope that you don't find out seven fifteen. Uh, Chris Paul did that's not make the point. trip. That's what know? was weird about the Utah thing is that so many of the players traveled with the team, like Gay and all those guys. That you just sort of assume that they're in especially when they're announced that they're available to play. Right. <laughs> and then, and then he and Royce O'Neal end up sitting out and, and they really went, they had to go just at the bottom of their bench, bench just empty it. Right. Um, so it, it is an interesting thing. I've been thinking about it a lot. I don't think they're going to leave anybody behind as of right now. It's not my first instinct, no, but, I, but I, um, they're playing for the, for the, you know, they're, they're right there for the one seed. And, and by the way, they very likely could get it tonight. And, because one of the best games of the whole season, maybe may one of the most, I don't know, certainly one of the games I'm most interested in in this whole season is, is going to be taking place a little bit later. So, um, so go ahead. yeah. So, so, so what I was getting back to with the Phoenix is I think that actually, believe it or not, I think that, I think if, if everything stays the way it is now, which it won't, I, I actually think Jay Crowder is going to be the chalk uh, today uh, uh, as far as value goes. I, you know, with Cam Johnson out, um, he's going to project really well. And for people that are going to want to get in Jokic, they're just going to, as I said, they're going to be forced to play somebody. And I think that he's going to be the chalk value that people play. And I, I really, I, now there, here's the, again, here's the question. I think that in and of itself, it's probably kind of shitty chalk, but if it's going to get you Jokic, for example, you know, maybe you could play shitty chalk, you know, cause those points are just, so important, you know, to, to get to those 60 points if you can get there. So, so uh, if you could find a, something better for me than, 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 Jay, than Jay Crowder 3,900, I think, I think that's going to help me um, because I do think that he's going to be pretty popular.
but the, the, the good guys on Phoenix, I, I like them. I like them both. I, I like Paul, I like Aiton, and I like Booker. So I like all three of those guys. Yeah, I don't think I'm realistically going to end up playing all three of those guys. So I mean, I, like I like them. Well, not together. I just mean that you know what I mean. Like I like them all. Yeah, they're definitely a little bit lower priorities for me, but I definitely have some interest. I do like Gary Trent on the Toronto side. Um, his price is cheap on both sides. Scotty Barnes is really cheap on FanDuel, and I think that's worth playing him over there. I think Ananubi is is in play um, on the Toronto side. I, I just and and the Van Vliet Siakam thing. They both have been going nuts, and this is not a good matchup though. Um, you have one of the better defensive, more efficient defensive teams in the NBA. I don't think that I'm going to play Fred Van Vliet at 9,600 against Chris Paul. It doesn't seem like a smart thing to do, but he's been going completely nuts um, against much, much weaker competition and Siakam against a team that's pretty good defensively. Uh, I can, I'm okay with it, but I don't love it. I, I kind of agree with what you were saying about Crowder. Um, but I think that the guy, you know, both OKC guys also will take up some of that ownership um at the same price basically so all right detroit chicago what do you got yeah it's a, it's another one of these guys i mean i mean another, another another one of these players in this price range you know uh vooch and DeRozan. i mean they, both these guys are you know are good plays in this kind of like not the highest of spend ups um they're not elite plays but they're good enough and in your non Jokic builds, I think that you could try to play guys like this. Um, I don't know whether, and, and again, if you're going to play Vooch, yeah, I mean, do it and, and don't play Jokic at all. You know what I mean? Like, th th then you could try to get away with that. Um, I, th I actually, as we go to other, I think I like other centers as maybe even better for pivots, but I, but I think that, that, that Vooch is very viable. So for me, it's Vooch and, um, and, and DeRozan from Chicago. And I really don't have much of the, I mean, on Detroit. Uh, so on, on FanDuel, La, Levine is 7,500. Oh, really? <laughs> and uh, DeRozan's 82, and he's 87 on DraftKings. They're both both very, very good prices for him. Yep. The guy who I'm sort of like, I could see having a monster game on Chicago that I don't think people are really talking about or going to be that that high on is Lonzo. Um it feels like a good kind of a good matchup for him. I'm a little concerned with Kobe White's minutes that Lonzo is getting a little less usage. I mean, there's already a lot of guys to compete for time with, and you want Lonzo to at least get you know have that chance at the the the, the assists and all that because he's he's going to rebound, he's going to get some steals and blocks in this kind of a matchup. Um, obviously, some blowout risk, but I, I do like um, if I had to rank the the spend ups for the Bulls, I would go DeRozan, Lonzo on DraftKings, DeRozan, Lonzo, Vooch um Levine and then I do think at the moment Derek Jones Jr. is going to be a filler piece at 3300 like just again hoping for something else but could end up with a little bit of him um the one who no one will play and I'm not going to probably either but just interesting because his minutes have fluctuated he's had some big games in there is Ayo Desonmu um I, I don't think I'm going to get there but it's a 150 type of play that I think you can you can take a shot on but again, that's if we don't get other value, which I'm, I'm assuming we will. Uh, Trey Lyles, they, they really seem to have just given him some run now. That I, I feel pretty confident they're going to continue giving him the, you know, the 26 to 30 minutes-ish, even it seems like with Stewart back for, you know, for whatever reason. He's 4,900. That's a totally fair based on his current role. So I do have some interest in him. And then if you wanted to get creative, again, it's a center position. I don't think I don't recommend doing that. Um, I do think at some point, some of those minutes might fluctuate back to Stewart. Um, so you could take that shot, but I would rather play Lyles at the forward spot as of right now. And then Sadiq Bey and Cade Cunningham are both good plays on FanDuel, but I don't think they're viable on DraftKings. I do like Josh Jackson here. Um, Josh Jackson has actually been pretty good. This has been a you know limited role. He did play 24 minutes in the last game, but um, he's basically been in that 20 to 30. What, what is he? He had, the, he had the one game with 12 against Memphis and the 17 and a half against Orlando, but 22, 27, and 37 the other three games more recently obviously blowouts are always in play he's going to get run no matter what which means he's always going to give himself a chance he's an off the board value that even on a you know a bigger slate with some other value i would probably take some chances on so i'm going to probably make it at least you know one out of three of my big lineups on DraftKings will probably have josh jackson in it because he's a great pivot off of that exact price tier you were just talking about if crowder and Baisley and earl end up at 30 percent each you could play Josh Jackson, who could literally outscore all those guys um, and does regularly. 
for at one percent ownership versus those guys at thirty. Um, so that that that's my sort of that's my thoughts here. And then we get to, to, to maybe the game of of the year. <laughs> like seriously, with Clay back and Memphis being the hottest team in the NBA, um, looking like the best team in the NBA at the moment. Uh, this is a great spot. I, I Golden State's a two point favorite. I like Memphis to win. Um, what are you, what are you doing here? Because there's this, this is a game where I, I definitely want to get some exposure, but it's hard to figure out how to do. I mean, you've got Toscano Anderson as the, the spend down at three K like showing up right now, but like a center spot. And by the end of the day, is that going to be good value? Iguodala, another one of those guys. Although I do sort of like Iguodala going, you know, back in Memphis and it's a, uh, it's an important game. Like this is like, you know, they want, they want their best foot forward when Clay's out there. Um, Clay will probably play 24 minutes maybe, or what did he end up playing the other night? 25 20 something yeah and, and he took 18 shots by the way so he was ready to ready to start getting some shots back up um by the way it, it's it's not something i'm gonna do tonight but don't it's it's it, we're not that far away from taking some shots on clay in my opinion if he's gonna shoot as much as he did the other night i think we should probably almost consider him soon like even in 20 20 some odd minutes he's you know putting up 18 shots I don't know why his projection is only to play 20 minutes tonight because he played 24 in his first game back. It seems logical that it would be about the same. Um, I don't know. So my long story short in this game though, is I like Ja a lot and I like Curry a lot. And I never, I don't usually like Curry, but I, I will take a, a non, a Draymond list warriors uh, who, who are going to need some, some help and not only a tough game, there's a little bit of a, a rivalry. I mean, Memphis knocked this team out of the playoffs last year in the play-in game. This is a spot where I think you could see the big, the big game from Steph. And I also think that it, Wiggins is getting overlooked. This is a fast-paced game. My first thought was to actually bet the over, um, but Golden State's been playing a tiny bit slower. Um, I don't know. So, so I really like the, uh, the Curry jaw thing, and I like the uh, Iguodala, maybe Toscano Anderson, but – uh, Iguodala, then Wiggins, those are the guys who I'm playing here. And we need to know about Porter and Peyton Jr. Because if those guys are out, then it does open up the value for, for the, other, the others in Golden State. But on the other side, I, I like John, I like Desmond Bain, and I like Kyle Anderson in that order. Um, the one who no one will play and no one ever does, if, assuming that he's in. Steven Adams is always an interesting unowned play at 5,300 because he's usually at the 25 plus range. And he has, you know, if he gets you 35, you're usually okay with it, but again, center a little bit too strong today. I mean, this guy was oh, Stephen Adams played 22 minutes his last game. He was 0 for 2 from the field, and he had 27 fantasy points. <laughs> like, I mean, he he can put up points if he just just a couple accidental tip-ins, and you're looking at 35, and it's just that that's just every game for him. He's missing a he's he's just you know he's always his floor is high um, for the most part. He does occasionally have the weird bad one, but mostly he's going to be in that 25 to 35 range. So he's mildly interesting, but. I would go jaw one, Bain two, uh, Kyle Anderson three. How about you in this one? Yeah, you, you really hit the nail right on the head as far as I'm concerned. I mean, like with, 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 that, with all of this, I mean, like, let's start with what you said about the two value pieces from Golden State. I mean, you have John, Juan Toscano Anderson and Iguodala are going to be projecting as the best values of the bunch. And it goes back to my original statement before the slate. I mean, like, it's really going to be the best of a bad bunch. I mean, neither of them are particularly great plays. Um, but you know, if you want to get some of the spend ups in, you're just going to have to, you have to eat some of that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, as far as the better players, yeah, I think Morant really, really good. And I think that, uh, that Curry is really good, you know, and, and, you know, obviously you can't play Curry and Jokic and get away with it. You know what I mean? Uh, what, what, what you, what you could do again, if you want, you could play both of them. Like you kind of are inferring maybe like, uh, you play Morant and Curry somehow mm -hmm. and, and then, and then hope that your value gets there mm -hmm. um it's hard um i don't like any i don't really like the other guys from memphis as much as you do for me it would be just be morant or nobody do you see that block he had the other day morant <laughs> no i don't, I don't know trying to throw it off the backboard he like literally blocked with like two hands like it was the most <laughs> ridiculous thing i've ever seen in my life the guy's insane yeah um so i do i do like that uh curry and and, and morant and then you know, those two value pieces. I know I'm, I know I'm going to end up getting them, you know, and I'm not going to be happy about it, but that's just the way, way it's going to be. Why don't you Why like don't, Bane? What's that? Why don't you like Bane? It's fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing, 
nothing major. I mean, I just think he's right. like he. This is a superstar on his way up. Um, I want to catch on to that. I, no, I, I, I think he's like a sure. Like they, they're trying to. I've heard some trade rumors with the Memphis team to try to like just literally get another star on their team, and they don't want. They won't give up. They like they really love this guy, and I mean, he look. He put up forty in the last game in twenty five minutes. He put up forty four the game before that. Right. You know, he's basically thirty five to fifty every night. Um, and a good matchup here. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely on, I, I want to keep riding this Bane thing. I just think that he's, okay. and everybody's sort of on it too, but I, I really, really think he's like, he's really good. And Kyle Anderson, we saw his sort of, I say it every time and I'm really, you know, bummed. I didn't, I didn't play that, uh, that slate. Uh, but of course the Lakers on, on Sunday, Kyle Anderson, every time he comes back to LA, you see Kyle Anderson taking over again. I don't know what the hell's going on, but he put up 42 fantasy points the other night and uh, it's enough for me to take a thought at some, you know, what, what might look like fairly thin value, but I think he's a pretty strong play actually uh, just because of the upside and he does play crunch time minutes for them uh, these days. So. That's I wanted to say, by the way, you mentioned you're you liked, uh, would you, would you like against the spread in this one? You like Memphis? I like Memphis. So I wanted to give you a, my, uh, Jack has a, we got a college basketball pick for today. Uh, we got a uh, Bama over Auburn. So. Just throw it out there. Oh, he's going with the, the Bama. By the way, I was pretty freaking close on that game last night. I said 30 to 17, Georgia. It was 33 to 18. Yeah, absolutely. It was right there. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Cool. yeah that's all right. So I got Bama over, uh, over Auburn. So I'll throw that out there. I like that. Uh, Minnesota against New Orleans. Um, yeah. So I alluded to this before. I, I like both of the centers here. I, li I like Kat. And I like Jovo. Um, and also on, on New Orleans, um, I like other guys. I, I like I like Josh Hart. And I like a guy that I don't really play that often. And whenever I do, he gets 4X. And that would be Brandon Ingram. Um, so I like him as well. So Ingram, Valanchunas, Hart. Obviously, I don't want to put all three of them. But, but, uh, but I like those three. I don't really like much of the value. Uh, Graham, I guess, is all right, but uh, I, I just don't want him today. And then uh, again, Minnesota. I do like Cat. He uh, had a nice. Uh, he had a nice game for me the other day. He was very, very low owned at six percent. He had like forty. At, uh, he had like actually he had like twenty five in the first quarter, and then he ended up with like thirty, and then he had like fifty five or something, and they he they weren't going to give him run in the fourth. Because it was a 20 point game, and then the other team cut it to 16, and then they brought him back in. That's why he got to 64 at the end, um, or something like that. I forgot the actual number, but that's that's how, how it happened. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I think he's okay too. So, um, Cat and maybe Beverly for what for Minnesota, he's okay too. Mm -hmm. But I do like all three of those guys from New Orleans Ingram, Valentinus, and Hart. Yeah, this game feels like the best, you know, most logically stackable game. Um, I, I like Beverly, assuming that he plays. Um, he's just consistently been putting up real games, and you have a fast-paced, sloppy team like New Orleans feels like a good spot for him. Uh, because of that, too, I, I, I will be mostly rotating Russell and Edwards on DraftKings. And uh, and, Tal and, 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 uh, and Joe Val, I like a lot, actually. I just am not getting to him as much on DK, but I do have a little bit of him on FanDuel. Um, but Edwards, Edward, you know, you could run some nice one v ones here. Ingram on one side, and then either Edwards or or Russell or Beverly or or two of those three. I think it's all viable. Um, Russell and Edwards, are, we just got to get used to them. They're not going to project great, but there's ceilings for these guys every time out there. Yeah, and the same is somewhat true about Towns too. You know, one of these guys usually gets there. Super long shot play here would be Malik Beasley, uh, especially with Beverly back. You wouldn't assume that he's going to play as much. But I would take a shot there just in a big field if we have no, no, uh, you know, all things being considered, because there is a chance that he can shoot himself into having a big game. And we are talking about some really thin value. So, again, we're probably going to have better value by the time the day's out. But that's an early look play. I, I would rank Ingram on, on the New Orleans side. I would rank it Ingram. Um, probably Hart, Joe Val, Graham on DraftKings. On FanDuel, I would rank it. Ingram, Joval, I guess Hart Graham. Um, and, and I don't think there's anything wrong with playing Herb Jones either. So I, I do think this is, a, this is a good game to get at least like you get, you know, maybe two of the studs back and forth with a, 
with a filler piece like a Beverly, um, with a filler piece like a Herbert Jones or something. Um, I think those are all viable. And then your long, large field play for really large field tournaments would be the Keel Alexander Walker on in New Orleans. So this is going to be a really, really weird spot this last game. And here's what's here's the argument against Jokic. Okay. Um, can I jump in there with this? Go for it. Okay. So we know what Jokic, Markeith Morris, Marcus Morris's twin brother, who they share a bank account and all the things. And there's, you know, they live together. They're, they, they, they used to play, played together their, most of their career. Obviously they're, they're pretty tight and there's been a lot of cursing back and forth between all the Morrises and, and the Jokic brothers and Jokic himself. Uh, Marcus, Marquise Morris hasn't played in 30 some odd games. I've never, I don't remember an NBA player injury, another player with a blatant play they got thrown out for and it not being talked about that much. And I am a, I love Jokic in general, but I, I think this is an interesting spot. I, I do expect Mar Marcus Morris to get ejected from this game. Um, if there's a, if, if you, if there's, if there's a way you can bet that somewhere, I, I think it's a very reasonable bet. Well, you can. What you could do is you. I bet you could find a prize picks under for Marcus Morris in points or assists or something. Yeah, but I, I don't. The, the, the flip side of it is I expect him to be very aggressive when he's out there. So I, I don't necessarily know that, that I want to take all the under. I wanted to bet on him specifically to get ejected, um, specifically technicals or something. I don't know. I just feel like it's just. I don't know how it's going to happen. I think Jokic will handle himself better this time. Um, but this is a weird situation. And Jokic is kind of a sweet guy. Like, he's not a guy we usually run into the, these kind of things with. He might have, like, a little, like, I'm almost just worried about him. Like, what if he plays, like, a little bit? I don't know. I'm just, this whole thing has been, like, really messed up. Um, so I, I do have a bad feeling about something happening in this game. And maybe that means one of the other pieces, like Austin Rivers or one of the other guys who, you know, think of themselves as a little bit of tough guys will come in and defend somebody and you could see some ejections. I just think you could see some, some weird nonsense in this game, not to mention these teams play each other in the playoffs. So like th there is some background here um, from a couple years back anyway, but um, there is some, some, some background here that, that does make me feel a little bit like, uh, I don't know, like it, there's just an uneasiness about who even is going to finish this thing. Um, anyway, I know that might be seem like overreaching, but if there's something that is always true it's i mean look at marcus look at the most both morris brothers they average their career high against the suns because they played for the suns these guys are very motive are very narrative based play guys who we can t try and exploit that um with that out of the way Jokic is the best spend up on the slate significantly projects higher than every player in, in the game could outscore the you know any other player by 20 fantasy points tonight or more um I think that on the, because of the lack of value, Austin Rivers in the minutes, I'm probably going to, this is like the one weird time where I play Austin Rivers. I think uh, Monty Morris is viable as well as Jermichael Green. And Jermichael Green is a pivot off of, uh, if you think Crowder is going to be too chalky, but he's going to have some ownership too, uh, Jermichael Green. Um, none of it's all that exciting. I do think with no Will Barton that, that we've seen this so many times with Aaron Gordon, but I'll, I'll play Aaron Gordon when he's 0% owned at 4,900. Um, I don't like it, but that's that's sort of what I'm looking at here. So I would go Jokic one, uh, Rivers two, uh, Jermichael three, Morris four, and then or sorry, sorry, Green four, Morris five. That's my Denver rankings. And for the Clippers, uh, I, I'm probably going to be lower on Marcus Morris, but I, I will play a little bit of him because I think that the narrative could go either way. And I think it's really interesting because Jackson's been losing minutes to Bledsoe and, and even to Boston in some cases. I, I think that no one's going to play him at 5,800 where we would have like been all over this play early, like a, a few weeks ago. I, I think speculating on both those guys, Bledsoe more for me on FanDuel, uh, Jackson for me on DK. Uh, but the main ones between Batum, Zubach, Coffee, Man, Ibaka, I would go Man 1, Batum 2, Zubach three, coffee four. That's where I'm at. All right. So I think that Jermichael Green is a good pivot off of the similarly priced Jay Crowder. Um, uh, not that he's a great player or anything like that, but just again, just a pot, just a part of the pile of five and a half X guys that may or may not get there. Um, uh, the next value guy I have on Denver would be Monty Morris, who you mentioned. And, you know, you, you don't need me to tell you that. If you could play Jokic, that's terrific. Um, on the Clippers, I didn't know all that about the um, about this whole Morris business. Um, the, the two guys that I have rated the best over there are actually going to be uh, 
Nicholas Batum and Zubac um, for the Clippers. And again, these are more five, again, five and a half X guys who are just, you know, whatever. Um, so these are going to probably be flipped in the, flipped into the mix. And now they're, they're not as cheap as these others, but you know, you, you need kind of a team of a team of a team of experts to, uh, to, to defend uh, Gyogic, I suppose. Um, <laughs> Um, and I don't know how much surge is going to play. I only have surge projected for 18 minutes today. Um, so Batum will play 30 minutes, probably Zubac, maybe, you know, somewhere obviously between 25 and 30. Um, I guess they're okay. And that's pretty much it. I don't want to play Reggie Jackson. I don't want to, I really don't want to play anybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fair enough. Um, I do think a couple of the guys are going to get there, but again, you can, there's plenty of other guys to choose from, and it's it is hard with the Clippers getting getting a little bit more healthy. Although, of course, you no know Paul George. Yep. Um, all right. Well, uh, with that said, so I'm just going to real quickly go through my some of my priorities. Jokic, obviously, making you know a lot of priority as a priority. Uh, I do think one of Crowder, Baisley, uh, Robinson Earl, and uh, who we just mentioned, uh, the 3700, uh, uh, Michael Green, as as you know, those are like some interesting, and, and Josh Jackson, of course. Um, uh, Trey Lyles, um, one of Shade, Shade Dort or Giddy, I think is fine, but probably not what I'm going to do. I do have Jaw as a priority, a uh, little bit less, less so for Curry, but I am going to run some back and forths. Uh, one of Bain or Anderson will be in a good portion of my lineups. One of Russell or Edwards, uh, or Beverly for that matter. Um, one of, uh, Valanchunas, Ingram. And uh, that's a lot more on FanDuel. And then Man, Coffee or Batum is the way I'm sort of dividing it up. And Zubac or Morris is the way I'm dividing up the Clippers. Yeah, Jokic is the is the top play. And then it's weird, you know. I I actually have Ingram as my next best. I like it on the whole slate. And. and I, I, you know, I just can't help myself because I have, I have Valanchunas rated fourth. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm going to do it. I think I'll just play them both and, and throw out Jokic and see what happens. And then, um, and then I got, and then I got Morant and Curry too, you know, so maybe I'll play some lineups with Curry and Morant. I'll play some lineups with, um, you know, Ingram and Valanchunas with, with maybe a, you know, I can't play Ingram, Valentinus, and Cat, but I guess I could. But maybe play like like Beverly and, and, and Edwards or something like that for the Minnesota side of that New Orleans game. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't want to have too much exposure. Again, don't be don't don't again. There's going to be stuff happens, but if they if it doesn't, don't don't play like 100 percent like Andre Iguodala. You know what I mean? Like if if like you're if you're optimized, it just gets you there. Um, I, I just really wouldn't do it. I mean, I, I think the difference between, and I, I don't, I use Andre Vidal as an example, and I don't know where he's going to end up projecting, but what, what ends up happening is you have these $3,700 guys that all project within like one point of each other. And, and, and the one that projects one point higher is going to be 40% on, you know, it's ridiculous, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. um, so, so just, just don't, don't fall into that. You know, if, if, if you have a 30, if you're between $3,700 guys on this slate, just, I would, I would go for a, I'm telling you, I kind of like the Jamichael Green thing. You, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a kind of a weird, I don't want to say pivot, but you know, kind of a weird, weird pivot, I guess, off of Jokic, sort of. You know, I don't know. But I mean, he could he could do something. You know what he could also do? He could get you three fantasy points. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's very possible. Um yeah, he's but, not gonna be off the board at all, I don't think. But, oh, you don't think? Oh, no, okay. I mean, as of right now, I'm showing him to be about the same as Onis Crowder. Um, oh, okay, okay, because I I just figured Crowder. See, Crowder to me seems like the safest of them all. I agree you know? with that because the minutes are there. Yeah. So he's yeah. going to be the safest, So, which is one of the reasons why I think he's going to be the, the chalkiest. Um, yeah, I agree with you. But I, um, I, I would uh, I would encourage people to take a take a shot with some, some Josh. Hey, Taylor. only because you mentioned it, t tell me about um, some of the uh, – the fan duel values you described because they're uh, not, not, not the cheapos, but you said that there were some plays on fan that are particularly good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mentioned him. Um, Levine is 7,500 over there. Right. Uh, DeRozan is even cheaper over there. Um, uh, Gary Trent, 5,200, he's cheap on DraftKings too. Um, okay. Uh, 
uh, what was the other one? Uh, the other ones who were there. Um, uh, oh, uh, Scotty Barnes is 5,600. Yep. yep. Um, Cade Cunningham is 6,500. Uh, Eric Bledsoe is 4,700. And D'Angelo Russell, 76. All those guys okay. are, are interesting to me. Okay. All right. All right. I guess, I guess we, so here it's just to keep up everybody up to speed. So we'll, we, I am going to be available for live before we got today. So we'll, we'll, we'll go live today at six. And tomorrow we're going to do, I imagine both, um, uh, We'll do this. I'll talk to you about this offline, but we'll do we'll do NBA because I have like two calls. We'll do NBA and then we'll do um, golf, mm -hmm. and then either probably I guess Thursday we'll do the the football slate. Yep. I guess for the weekend. Yeah. Um, and then in the meanwhile, I'll, I'll I'll throw in my MMA is back this weekend, so I'll be coming up with an MMA thing. Um, Survivor, uh, again, those of you who are participating in that throughout the year, you know, I hope you guys learned something. Uh, next year, I'm probably going to add some, 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 uh, some applications, some tools on there to kind of beef that, that, that product up just a little bit. But, you know, uh, that uh, helped you and it helped me too. It helped me, you know, me talking through everything, kind of helped me do well. And we're going to continue to listen. If you can't beat them, join them with New York going live with sports betting. We're going to, we're going to have to. We're yep. going to have to ramp up our sports betting content. Yep. So, Absolutely. so, so, you know, we're going to try to get, Oh yeah. You got to, got to reach out to him. We got to see if we can get big Al on here. Yeah. Him. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, we'll, 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 we'll cater to that too. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Hey man, happy birthday. I hope you have a great time today and then I'll see you live. Of course. Yep. Before you do your Absolutely. Uh, guys, let's crush it today. And uh, we'll see you in, at six Eastern.